Let's talk about tailoring your self-leadership style. Grant Bosnick, founder of Upbeat, an author, a keynote speaker, joining us. He is the, uh, the author of a Tailored Approach to Self-Leadership, a bite-sized approach using psychology and neuroscience. Grant, welcome to the studio. Great to have you with us. Great. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. That's a mouthful, that title. <laughs> that is, you've got a lot going on there. Give us, some, give us the uh, cliff notes. Give us the short version of what does the, that actually mean for folks? What does it mean? I, I think that... Um, I was heavily influenced by uh, the, the game book genre when I was a kid, which is when you have a, uh, a choose your own a choose your own story, mm -hmm. choose your own adventure yeah. story. You know, there's copyright on that, by the way, registered trademark for yeah. that name. Yeah. So um, it's a choose your own self leadership adventure where you can read the book in any order that you want. Um, there's an assessment up front that I've created for it, which will give you a some tips and some strategies to develop your self leadership. Um, the assessment gives you a 12, no, sorry, an 18-page report that then maps onto the chapters of the book and uh, gives you a recommended order to read the books in. What's the problem that you're trying to solve here? So um, I think or the that, job to be done. Well, I, I think that you know one of the the number one challenges that people have is that we think that changing our habits and growing and and developing ourselves is is difficult because we, we've been brainwashed to believe that changing our habits is difficult. So this book helps to break it down into how we can change our habits in a very um, easy easy way to do it that is tailored for each individual person. I did a keynote talk last week for uh, 150 people and of the people who did the assessment we had um, of the six different pathways that the results can um, you know, there's six pathways, and basically there's three chapters of the book that map onto each of those pathways. And then um, the results are spread out. There's quite a wide range. And there, there is no one-size-fits-all. Everybody's on their own pathway, their sure. own self-leadership adventure, and this book helps them to tailor it for them. So you, as you say, you've been an executive coach in this region, Asia Pacific, for about 20 years or so. Yeah. To Glenn's point, what was it you were seeing or not seeing that inspired you to write this book? Well, um, so I spent most of those 20 years focused on uh, team effectiveness and, and um, people leadership. So I work a lot with mid to senior level and executives, whether it's one-to-one -one executive coaching or as group sessions. And my clients were saying, Grant, can you create something for everybody? So I then thought, okay, what would be for everybody if it's not people leadership would be self-leadership. So I, I think that um, there, there's three concentric circles that, that I see, that self-leadership is in the center, then people leadership, then thought leadership. And so I see self-leadership as being the heart of all leadership. Mm -hmm. So that was what, what, what I wanted to create this book for, was to reach out to that starting point that we, we have to start with. Um, you know, they, they, when you're in an airplane, they say, put your oxygen mask on before helping others to put theirs on. Now, if you go through a pandemic or go through any kind of change at all, and, you know, we go through change all the time, it's not once, it's all the time, you know, we have to take care of ourselves first in order to be credible to take care of others. And I think that this is not only for leaders, like uh, people leaders or executives, to help them to be more self leaders first, but it's for everybody across the organization. Mm. Now, we can sell this book for every company, and then you know, 2,000, 3,000 copies, we can sell right across the company. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, we did that, we did that for an offsite. We did it for an offsite in December. You know, we had uh, some 65 people come up to the offsite. They said, great, we want a copy for everybody. All right? We, we can do it. <laughs> now, when, when you look at the last uh, three years, what what specifically have, have leaders experienced that might lead them to realize uh, maybe an epiphanous moment that they need to change in some way because for a lot of leaders change is hard you know we are who we are as adults 40 50 60 year old adults who have been leading for for years decades it's hard to make those major changes but have, have the last few years prompted some some big changes in people's thinking well um, about leadership and who they are well i mean there's a lot of you know real economic events that have happened over the past few years you know the, the great um not recession, the great uh, resignation, you know, mm. for example, the quiet quitting and all of this and that, you know, like leaders do need to change in order to retain talent, first of all, here. Mm. The other thing I think that, um, you know, that especially with successful leaders, that they have been successful because of certain behavior that they have done and that's led them into the positions that they are. They've also been successful in spite of certain behavior that may not be 
leading to the best results that they could get. Give us an example. Could you, yeah, can you yeah. give examples of both of those? Well, like, like say for example, and this has happened a lot with, with um, uh, big organizations, for example, that um, leaders get promoted based on their technical abilities, based on their business acumen, based on the financial results that they get. So your top salesperson eventually then becomes your, your head of sales who eventually might become the CEO because they were great at bringing in revenue for the company. Mm. However, that person may not have the most finesse when it comes to people skills. They might be a little abrasive to some people. They might not really be listening or hearing what people are saying as much as they could. And this could lead to yeah. um, some people leaving the organization or it could lead to people just not having good relationship. So, yeah. for example, they got to the top of the, the, the company because they had great um, ability to bring in revenue. However, in spite of that, they are not as um, finesse at having the um, um, people leadership. So how do you, someone like yourself, an executive coach, through your one-on-ones, through your sessions, and through this book, how do you see or pick out these, I'll call them deficiencies, you might use another word, but how do you spot these things and fix them or address them? Well, um, I mean, as I said, a lot of them, my background's in psychology and neuroscience, which is why the subtitle of the book is A Bite-Sized Approach Using Psychology and Neuroscience. So I um, won't go in to help a company to increase their uh, market share because there's other consulting companies that they can hire to do that. So I focus on the behavior and the uh, mindsets that people have. So I... I, I um, you know, we'll go that. So first of all, that's what I will help people, leaders to focus on and uh, in organizations that the behavior that they've got, the helping people to meet the psychological needs. Now, I think some of the signs that we might spot then would be, I mean, when I'm having a chemistry call with someone who might be a potential coachee for me, for example, or if I'm listening to the HR describe some of the challenges that they're having in, in the organization here, I'm, I'm listening for the way that people might be communicating. That's one of the things that I'm looking for. Now, especially if it's in a, a call, you know, I, I, for example, uh, one, one client I was working with and someone in, in my session, he said, you know, I keep telling my team members that they need to improve, but they never do. And so I said to him, it's like, how often do you praise them? <laughs> and he paused and he said, never. But do you think that might help? That sounds familiar. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, for example. So, uh yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I listen to the, what they're saying and what is missing from what they are saying and where the gaps are in, in where they might be behaving. Now, so, I mean, because uh, a lot of us, we are not fully aware of the impact that we have on others. You know, most of us mm -hmm. are not aware of the impact we're having on others. So having an external view to, to help see where that behavior is leading and the result that that might be leading to. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is fascinating to me because I know this... This kind of work is very popular in the U.S. and Europe. And when I'm listening to you, I'm thinking of the TV program Billions. I don't know if you've seen Billions. Oh, yeah. You sound like the Wendy character. Is that <laughs> essentially what you do? <laughs> for those who haven't seen Billions, the Wendy character is a psychologist. She works for this massive hedge fund. And her job is not to do to deal with revenue. It's to do just that, to work on personal mindset, yeah, mindset personal responsibilities and behaviors and yeah. so on, yeah. which seems to be a popular business uh, in, the, in the West. Is this something that's really taking off in Singapore and this part of the world, this kind of job, this kind of role? Yeah, well, I think one of the questions I would ask people is, like, when you hear the word feedback, what do you think? And, I mean, you don't need to answer it yourself here right now, but um, when I've asked people that, they uh, think, well, it means I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is a, a, a mindset that feedback means Negative feedback. But it's often does in Singapore. That's well, the that's, truth. Yeah. You don't hear from your boss until you I do something wrong. I would say 95% of the time. You don't hear from yeah. your boss yeah. until you do something wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this does change. I, I, I encourage leaders when they're going to have conversations with team members, don't use the word feedback. You know, let's talk about the meeting this morning. Let's talk about the report. Let's have a catch up and um, see where, 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 where you would like to be. You know, but don't use the word feedback. I mean, and there's a lot of psychology behind this. When, when people hear the word feedback, there's this defensive mechanism that yeah. clicks in our brain that we clam it's a loaded. Up. It's a loaded word, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Brad, in your book, you've got different chapters, obviously. Goals, inspiration, mindfulness, flow, physical health, insight, expectations, emotional regulation, persuade and influence, time management, change, agility, resilience. I mean, those are some big, those are some big oh, biases in here, trust, empathy, presence. 
that's huge. Yeah. Like there is a lot. There's a lot to chew on there. Yeah. Um, what is what is the easiest way for people? Is is it literally just following the book from front to end and and taking the journey that way, or can people dip into different chapters, saying, "Hey, some feedback I got was I'm not empathetic enough." So right. can they go to the empathy chapter? How does it how does it work to go through this you know, yeah. program that you've designed? Yeah. So I mean, there are, there are 18 chapters in the book, and uh, my background. I used to teach logical thinking in business school several years ago, and for four years I taught logical thinking and got into my head all these different kinds of MECE frameworks. And for those of you that don't know what MECE is, M-E-C-E, -E, it's an acronym consultants use it, which means mutually exclusive, collectively exhausted. So mm. if you think like a SWOT analysis, strength, mm. weaknesses, opportunities, threats, it's mutually exclusive, the categories are different, and it's collectively exhaustive, it covers everything. So I was thinking about that with this background in this consulting framework, how can we create this MISI framework with self-leadership. So I thought about all the different topics that might be relevant for self-leadership. I came up with 18 of them, and that's what is in the book itself here. Now, you don't have to read it cover to cover. So this is, um, as I call it, a choose-your-own self-leadership adventure. I've created a little map for people as well, too. This map is great. <laughs> I want to talk about the map in a minute, but carry on with your We'll talk about the map after that. Yeah. Right? So, uh, it, it, it's designed that you can read it in any order that you want. So you could take a look at the, uh, the, uh, the chapters in the book and then just decide which chapter is most relevant for you at this moment. Yeah. You know, as you said, if someone says, well, I'm not being empathetic enough, so okay, let's read the chapter on empathy. And I've also created a, um, a self-assessment that will also then, um, basically the self-assessment, um, it, 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 it's, it's um, assessing what is most important to you right now. And then, based on the, 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 the questions that are on there, it'll then give you a recommended order to read the book in. So it's not based on your, we're not measuring your ability to do these, we're measuring what is most relevant to you right now, what is important to you now. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that could be the same answer in your own mind, you know, it's how I, uh, I want to be more persuasive, that's why I want to mm -hmm. choose being persuasive here. You know, that's important, I don't think I'm very good in that right now here. So maybe that might be some of the answers that you're giving, and there's what's important to you now, what are your challenges, what are your passions, what are you aiming to achieve, and then as a result of the assessment, it'll then give you a recommended order to, to read the books in. Let's look at that book assessment. I'm, I'm guessing you do some of this self-assessment self in your one-on-ones and in your group sessions. What are some of the more common responses you see, particularly in Singapore in the workplace, when they do these self-assessments? What comes up the most? Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm actually quite surprised. I was kind of imagining that there's a, one, one of the pathways is around uh, change, agility, and resilience. So I kind of felt that that one might come up at the top, you know, given what people are going through. Um, possibly if they took the assessment at the beginning of the pandemic, possibly that might have been higher up there, but it's actually not as high as I had expected that one to be. So some of the ones that are actually coming up high around emotion regulation is, is a big one that's coming up um, a lot. What, is it, what does that mean, emotion regulation? Um, so I think of emotion regulation, there's two ways that we can use it. And the way, the first way that most people think of it is when we go through some kind of major change or traumatic event. So this could be something economically like a stock market crash, or it could be restructuring in an organization or you know, laying off um, people in, in a company or being laid off yourself, or it could be something personal in your life, a death in the family or uh, illness or something like that that, yeah. that might impact people's lives. So we have these strong emotions. we got to be able to regulate those emotions. It's one way we might use that. Now, I, I think that it's not only when we're having traumatic events, but when we are even in a calm state, because part of emotion regulation is being able to reframe our situation. And, and that concept and the ability to reframe, I talk a lot about in, in the chapter on, on emotion regulation, on reframing, and going through it in a lighthearted, creative, fun way. And there's a whole page of interesting, creative, sparking questions in there, like, um, what would your best friend do if they were in that situation? Hmm. Or um, if, you, if your child were having this same issue, what advice would you give them? Or going to the world of sports, you know, thinking of... Uh, you know, um, the same bolt, you know, what would he do if you're in that situation or a musician, Beyonce, what would she do if she were here? And there's a lot of creative thinking questions there. What would be a motto or a metaphor that you might think of to uh, help you through this? And I call it framestorming. 
So I was combining brainstorming and reframing together. And the concept of brainstorming, if you can come up with 10 or 12 different ways of reframing your current situation, and then reviewing those and picking the two or three best ones that sound or resonate with you, this is going to change your behavior, which will then get better results. So one of the things I fully believe here is in the see, do, get model. Uh, see is the uh, mindset or the way we see the world. Do is our behavior that we do, and uh, get is the results that we're going to get. And so if you want to make small changes in your life, focus on the behavior. But hmm. if you want to make quantum leaps, focus on your mindsets. So the like concept growth, of, like a growth mindset, for example. Yeah, so a growth things. mindset would be part of it. The, the, um, the, the, I mean, growth mindset would be like the, the, the starting with the notion that we can change our mind, um, and then the, the whole chapter goes into lots of exercises for building mental muscles in there and being able to have more executive control of our mind and our mindset, which is then going to lead to more effective behaviors and lead to more effective results. Nice. Wow. The uh, the book is called Tailored Approaches to Self Leadership, uh, published by Rutledge with a forward by Marshall Goldsmith. Uh, the author is Grant Bosnick, uh, talking about the three kinds of leadership: self leadership, people leadership, thought leadership, and the various elements in eighteen chapters of how you can change your own leadership to be more effective. Grant, how can folks get in touch with you if they want to know more personally about how how you might be able to help them? Um, you can reach out to me on any of the socials, either uh, LinkedIn is probably the best way to le reach out to me. I'm the only person with, in the world with my name, Grant Bosnick, so uh, <laughs> it is very easy to find me out there. Good. Uh, that would be well, one way to, to reach me. It might be the easiest way if you if search me through And LinkedIn. the book is officially out this year, 2023. Where can they find the book? Uh, in Singapore, Kino Cunha. Both locations are stocking it here. Um, Amazon's got it. Uh, so um, ebook Amazon C O U K has it for some reason Amazon Singapore doesn't have the ebook I'm not sure exactly why or maybe they haven't got it yet I'm not sure what's going on there but if you want the ebook Amazon C O U K would be the best place to get that one awesome. uh, or you can order it through Amazon if you want soft cover or hardcover or Kino Cunha. terrific Great. thanks for your time today appreciate it thank you great to be here.